My name is Jay Tizzle with the Lola and Mildred Furniture Company, and today we are going to show you how we built this red oak floating frame to display a custom George Bailey Lassels the Moon canvas for Jamie's Christmas present. Stick around! Before we get going, let's take a look at a drawing by George's wife Mary depicting George lassoing the moon in the 1946 Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life. This is Jamie's favorite movie. We went to a freelance website, Fiverr, to search for an artist to create a custom design, replacing George with James. The initial search of George Lasso's The Moon returned zero results, so we brought in the search criteria to custom cartoon drawing, and over 10,000 results returned. Nobody was advertising what we were looking for, so we created a script and sent messages to users with attractive thumbnails and good reviews. We sent a selfie, the picture of George lassoing, and a description of what we wanted. A few freelancers told us they could not help us out, but then Sidali Boudra from Algiers, Algeria messaged us back and said he could for 30 bucks. We accepted the offer and within 24 hours, Sidali sent us proofs to review. Everything looked great except the character looked nothing like me. My sister had a great idea to send him my Bitmoji. We did this and shortly after, Sindali sent us a revision. This cartoon looked a lot better, so we accepted the offer by approving the final delivery. We uploaded our PNG file to Vistaprint and within a few days, a 24 by 16 inch canvas was delivered. For this project, we are going to use select grade red oak. We went with 5 fourths by four but as you see on the tag, the actual size is one by three and a half. We're going to get two eight foot boards. Off camera, we made a template out of old bed slats. It's a good thing because I cut the floating frame completely wrong on the first try. This is a better prototype of what we are going for. We want a quarter inch gap around the entire portrait. So we'll add a half an inch to both the length and the height of our canvas. We'll set the lumber on the workbench, remove the shrink wrap, and mark the board at two and three quarter inches. We don't have an outfeed table or even rolling stands for the table saw, so eight foot boards are just too difficult to manage. We cut the boards in half on the miter saw station. We blew sawdust off of the table saw and applied a thin layer of paste wax with a blue shop towel to reduce friction. We used a tape measure to set the fence two and three quarter inches from the blade. The table saw has a 10 inch 24 tooth ripping blade installed on it. I was astonished when I learned how few teeth ripping blades have. Here we are setting up a gripper. This yellow piece of plastic will allow us to keep pressure on the table and against the fence while protecting our fingers. Here we are ripping the wood with the table saw. Ripping means we are cutting with the grain of the wood, reducing the height of the lumber. We are going to need two 24 and a half inch pieces to make the top and bottom of the base rectangle. So we'll set the miter saw station and cut two pieces of oak. We'll need the base rectangle to be 16 and a half inches tall. Since we already have two two and three quarter inch pieces, only the side pieces to be 11 inches tall. We'll put two pieces of oak on the miter saw station and cut them both to 11 inches. We set up the four pieces to construct our rectangular base and double check our measurements. We are going to use pocket holes to connect the base. We'll put two pocket screws in each of the four joints. We are going to use a Craig K5 jig to drill our pocket holes. We set the board thickness meter to one inch since that is the thickness of our stock. We place the drill bit all the way into the jig and lift up slightly, leaving a small gap. Then we tighten the collar with an Allen wrench and load the drill bit. Since we are drilling a hole, we'll want to turn the clutch off, putting us into drilling mode. Then we'll make sure we're in high speed. Next, we'll place the stock into the jig and pull down on the handle to tighten the clamp. We'll use slots one and three to drill two pocket holes. Then we'll flip the lumber and repeat the process. We did this twice to make two side pieces. We'll change from high speed to low speed and switch from drill mode to screw mode by setting the clutch at eight. 
Then we'll load a square or a Robson bit into the drill for the Craig screws and set up the inner rectangle of the frame. This is an absolutely terrible technique for applying glue and I don't know what we were thinking. We'll place the side piece in the appropriate position and tighten everything up with a bar clamp. We use a tack hammer to slightly adjust the alignment and tighten the clamp a little more. Next, we'll load Craig screws into the pocket holes and drive them in. We went ahead and propped the frame base on scrap wood so it wouldn't stick to the workbench and wiped away the extra glue. This is a horrible technique. As you'll see later in the video, it is much better to allow the glue to dry for about 20 minutes and cut the excess glue out with a razor blade. Now that the base rectangle is complete, we are going to set the miter saw to 45 degrees and cut a bevel into a piece of oak. We'll slide the beveled piece of oak to align it with the top left corner of the rectangle, then we'll mark a cut line on the other side of the board. We'll intentionally cut the board long or fat and creep up on the cut. We'll do this as many times as necessary until we get an almost perfect fit. Once we get a good match, we'll go ahead and mark the corresponding pieces with their clock position. We'll mark the rest of the sides and use the same technique of creeping up on the cuts. It's very important that we do not cut a piece too short because it cannot be fixed. Once we are satisfied with the fit, we can move on to sanding. We'll progress through the sanding grits, 80, 120, and 220. This sanding session lasted a full 12 minutes. You are watching a version that has been sped up 45 times the regular speed. We took our time to get a super smooth finish. Next, we'll go ahead and assemble the floating frame in its entirety. We'll add lots of glue to the inward facing sides of all of the planks and between all of the mitered corners. Then we'll use a band clamp to tighten everything up. Since we have enough room, we'll use a second band clamp to really strengthen the hold. We propped the frame up on butcher block scraps and we'll use a few clutch clamps to firmly squeeze all of the seams together. We let the glue dry for approximately 20 minutes and used a box cutter to remove squeeze out. This is by far the best glue removal technique we have ever tried. We removed all of the clamps and although it is probably overkill, we sanded some more with 220 grit. We shook up a can of Verithane pre-stained wood conditioner and used a blue shop towel to apply the pre-stain to the entire frame. We used early American stain for round one and switched to dark walnut for rounds two and three. We were careful to wipe away excess stain to prevent a blotchy finish. We waited two days for the stain to dry and sprayed on two coats of high gloss polyurethane. We waited a month for everything to completely dry before mounting the frame on the wall. To center the canvas, we counted an equal amount of playing cards to place at the top and bottom of the canvas. Then we repeated the process for left and right. Mildred made sure she stayed close to supervise. We identified our studs on the wall with blue tape and outlined the position of the frame with green tape. Jamie held the frame in place while I drilled a pilot hole and drove a screw into the top left portion of the frame. We placed a level on top of the frame to make sure everything was level and again drilled a pilot hole and drove a screw into the frame. We peeled away the tape and connected the frame to the studs with two more screws. We placed double-sided mounting tape around the perimeter of the canvas. 
And finally, we use the playing cards to center the art and tape the canvas to the frame. Thanks for sticking around until the end of this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos on YouTube. Also, we have a website, lolaandmildred.com.